Yeah, I shaved. The beard was driving me crazy, but I'm not really here actually to talk about my facial hair. No, this morning I want to address directly Matisse 2 and the strategy surrounding it. And that's because, well, surprisingly to me, there's a lot of people that don't seem to get why Matisse 2 exists. Back on May 7th, I summarized what I knew of Matisse. Two, in the middle of a rather lengthy video, in summary, I said that I knew these were coming out in July and they would likely be faster clocked 3600X, so like a 3650X, a 3850X, and maybe something called, I don't know, a 3920X. And in fact, I knew this would be pretty easy for AMD considering multiple people in my Discord had tested a few chips and found that newer purchased 3600s were clocking on average, 100 to 200 megahertz higher than previously 2019 purchased CPUs at the same voltages. And I guess I also said that I knew that AMD was considering not allowing these to work on pre-500 series motherboards, and the same would go for Zen 3. But of course, by now, we know that AMD has worked a little harder than they initially planned to, and will now be bringing pre-500 series support to Zen 3 and Matisse 2. And we also know that, no, not a 3920X, a 3900 XT is the name. Now, out of this new information, I think the first thing I actually do want to address is the name. The name, guys, doesn't matter. I don't know why I'm seeing, well, so much of the discussion being uh roadblocked at this why didn't they call it the 3850x i mean 3850x 3800 xt uh 3000 pig shit edition it doesn't matter these names do not matter they can be changed last minute by amd they could even decide to change it back to the previous name but the point is that it sounds like for now xt is what they are going with and i think that's on purpose right the 3950x is quite a bit more than the 3900X. It's not worlds better, but it's not like a 10% boost. So I feel like the XT is to signify this isn't some world-changing performance upgrade. No, this is to signify that this is a slight upgrade to the X. That's why it's the XT. And these are, of course, being launched to combat Comet Lake, which currently holds a measly 7% lead over AMD in average gaming performance. And that's what Matisse 2 is for. It's a slight boost because it's easy. Right, And I really do need to emphasize the because it's easy. AMD is getting better yields than they had a long time ago. A lot of people are forgetting that at the launch of Zen 2, they had only 70% 7 nanometer yields. Now, by the end of 2019, that was close to 85 to 95%. And so by now, they can get what would have been golden samples, a lot of them. They don't just need to save these for Threadripper and the 3950X anymore. AMD, with very little effort, has a chance to make Intel look insanely silly. And so, they're going to. That. That is the point of Matisse 2. Very little effort required, and yet, they can just swipe Comet Lake aside right now. They don't need to wait for Zen 3. They could, but they don't need to. It's easy to crush Intel now. And I see a lot of people confused about why they would do this. That is why. All right, so I've covered why they're launching these products, and I've mostly covered why they would use the name XT. Well, yeah, mostly why they would use the name XT. Another reason I think they might go with the name XT is to denote a 125 watt model. This is not coming from any source. This is my speculation. If I'm wrong about this speculation, I'll admit it. But it really does make sense, doesn't it? Intel's now finally admitting these things use more than 95 watts. Now, they certainly use more than 125 watts at default settings on most high-end motherboards, but yeah, that's what I think AMD's doing. I think they're coming up with the XT nomenclature that they might use again in future generations to denote this is a higher clocked 125 watt model. The XT denotes this is a higher power model, likely not coming with a stock cooler. Now, one of the last things you're probably wondering about Matisse 2 is, well, is it gonna work? Are we getting hashtag 5 gigahertz CPUs to crush Intel? Well, I think it might actually turn out better than people expect, although I certainly don't think it's going to hit 
five gigahertz at least I, I i guess i wouldn't entirely rule it out that maybe one of the models will single core boost for a blink of an eye to five gigahertz but i doubt it no i think it's going to be about just that easy two to four hundred megahertz clock speed increase on the base clocks with some other slight tweaks like if i use the 3800x as an example and again this is speculation so don't hold me to it this is basically what i think we're going to see you know now it's a 125 watt model now it has 300 megahertz higher base clocks and well there you go 300 megahertz higher base clocks that's a 7.7 percent increase in base clocks at stock that might actually catch up to that eight core i7 and i also think for the 3850x or i'm sorry the 3800 xt that they might use dual single ccx ccds basically a double 3300x but with higher clock speeds and if they do do that yeah i think the 3800 xt could catch up i think it could catch up and maybe even surpass that i7 and come close to that i9 and the 3800x has been found at 300 dollars from time to time already so they can just drop this right in at 350 and keep the 3800x at 300 or wherever it's jumping around right now and then keep the 3900x at 400 and then launch a higher clock 3900 xt for i don't know 450 or 500 it all makes a lot of sense and i yeah i mean i wouldn't rule it out that amd can add at least five percent higher gaming performance on these three models the 3600 xt the four the 3800 xt and the 3900 xt and if they do they just make intel look super stupid and actually, I wouldn't be surprised if with some of these, especially the 3600 XT, you could overclock all core turbo to be stable at around 4.5 or maybe on golden samples, even 4.6 gigahertz. And that will game really well for the money. However, I don't think there's going to be any point of pushing it to 5 gigahertz, even if you could. As pointed out in this YouTube video here, Zen 2 really wasn't built to scale performance to 5 gigahertz well, or at least, I don't know, it doesn't. That's what this person hardware numbers found. I hope to have them on Broken Silicon soon. The point is, unless you were to insanely overclock fabric clocks, I don't think going to 5 gigahertz would scale linearly. I think the wall for Zen 2 frequency and game performance scaling is around 4.2, 4.4 gigahertz, and that is where I think AMD will not exceed the base clocks for these new models. So in other words, I do think Intel will have a slight top, top, hippie top gaming advantage if you have the top i9 and clock it all core turbo to like five or 5.1 gigahertz screaming at 300 watts, Yes, I do not think the top 3900 XT or 3800 XT will technically beat that in gaming performance. I do think that's still going to happen. But I think at base numbers, the XTs could be solid gaming refreshes. And actually, I do think that's something Zen 3 is going to address. I think the unified 8-core CCX in a CCD is going to make Zen 3 scale gaming performance with frequency better than Zen 2 ever possibly could. And that's why I think Zen 3 will be the ultimate gaming lineup, potentially, potentially, I don't know for sure, for a while. And that's also why I think there's some discrepancy in what the IPC increase is going to be with Zen 3. I mean, think about it. In server, uh, with certain apps, it might only be about 10% better if it's clocked at three gigahertz. But if you have a 4.7 gigahertz Zen 3 gaming chip, yeah, I could totally see it getting to a 20% IPC increase than a Zen 2 CPU at 4.7 gigahertz. But that's because it didn't really scale the IPC as high as it should have. And speaking of Zen 3, I don't think Matisse 2 changes anything. There are a lot of people doubting what I've been saying, what Adored's been saying, what some others have been saying that Matisse 2 is coming because they're like, that's too close to Zen 3. There's no way. Again, it, it's about, it's easy. It's super easy for AMD to release this refresh and crush Comet Lake a few months before Zen 3 comes out. And, and on that note, nothing's changed. You know, none of my sources have changed what they're saying. And if anything, they're getting more confident that Zen 3 is coming with a full launch, although staggered. Do not expect all Zen 3 models to come out at the same time, just like with Zen 2. This, this year, quarter three or quarter four. Zen 3 is still coming. When we said it's still coming, despite Matisse 2 coming out, 
in about a month. And after all, this really shouldn't surprise that many people. AMD wasn't afraid to launch the 2700X 50th Anniversary Edition right before Zen 2 came out, and they haven't been afraid to launch the 1600 AF and 1200 AF out of nowhere and then seemingly discontinue the 1600 AF a few months after it came out. I mean, I can't seem to find them in stock anywhere. Maybe that'll change, but I don't know. If you ask me, the hard to get 1600 AF combined with the recently launched 3300X, maybe it was just a temporary launch. Maybe that's what Matisse 2 is. And the fact of the matter is, because I expect Zen 3 to be a staggered launch, I think they're just going to do most of the high-end chips first with, you know, the $300 to $500 price points for high-end gaming. And they can just drop the price, drop the price on Matisse 2 to around $200 or below for budget gaming builds, just like they did with the 2700X. This isn't new. AMD is not afraid to launch specific niche CPUs to fill in holes in their product lineup and crush Intel when they want to, even if it won't last that long. And if it does, they can just drop prices. These are very cheap to manufacture. These CCDs, chiplets, are like 70 millimeters squared on an ultra mature node. They're fine dropping prices in half a year after Zen 3 comes out. And speaking of the Ryzen 4000 lineup, I guess the last thing I want to say in this video is, I don't know, maybe AMD isn't going to milk too much with the Ryzen 4000 series. In my last video where I talked about the 4700G, I mentioned that making a 4700G in R7 is pretty crazy considering how cheap Renoir is to manufacture, and I assumed then that there would just be a 4600G, but now it looks by a recent leak from video cards, which again, I think their track record's very good. I don't know, actually. They look like they might be bringing six cores, 12 threads to the 4400 segment, which to me, tells me they're not over-segmenting too much. To me, this suggests AMD just refuses to not call an 8-core R7 still. So maybe that R7 4700G will just be $250. Maybe there will still be a Zen 3 4600X Ultimate Mid-Range Gaming CPU. But that discussion's really to be saved for another video. And I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did and you've been watching my other videos, I think like 80% of you who watch my videos still aren't subscribed to my channel for some reason. Consider subscribing if you've been watching a bunch of them, and if you are, please ring the bell button, share my videos, and of course, consider supporting me on Patreon. That's who's making this all happen, and finally, as always, thank you for watching.